All right, so last time. So, oh, you want to know why we're playing the stream earlier in the day? Not just for our friends in Europe and elsewhere, but also because if it's during the day, I can just play my flute randomly at any moment. So be expecting that. <laughs> um, yeah, so last week we played this for my birthday. This is my favorite game of all time, and our very own Chrono and I had a conversation about the thematic significance of things in this game, and I went off on a tear about it, and Chrono was like, oh, that's interesting, and I was like, oh, should I just, like, stream this game and do this? People were like, yes. So that's what we've been doing. Um, just to say, this is gonna be, like, the sloppiest, messiest, weirdest stream I usually do blind streams. I'm not playing Final Fantasy VI blind. I know that's a surprise to everyone, but I've played Final Fantasy VI before more than once, actually. Um, so instead of like being like, let's experience this together for the first time, I'm just playing this game because I like it. So last time, oh my God, I love this song. Last time, <laughs> yes, I did in fact dye my hair green specifically to cosplay as Terra. Um, so last time we played the game, we played through the beginning and it took us two and a half hours to get through the first half hour of the game because I had thoughts and feelings and had to share them all with you. Um, I'm probably going to repeat myself a lot. <laughs> I hope that's okay with you guys. Um, and we wound up playing through the exciting section in which all of our characters split up to go do different things. Um, normally I would start with the one that I like was interested in least and get that over and done with and then end with the one that is emotionally my favorite, which is to say Locke and Sully's spending time in South Figaro. But we had a chat and I was tired and low energy so we decided to just start with the things that I was really excited about, which was Block and Sully's in South Figaro. <laughs> um, I don't know what channel points are. I don't know what channel points are. Are they good? Do we have channel points? What do we do with them? What does this mean? I don't know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so then, then obviously, so, so I love Block and Sully's. And the section with Locke and Sully's in South Figaro is very important to me personally because it sets up their relationship. Oh, I should figure out. Oh, okay. Is that a thing I have to do? Oh, I see Aquamagisus made a thing glow and I can see that it's glowing and highlighted. Okay, I got it. I saw that. Um, I guess I should probably make a custom emote. I guess I should make more emotes. All right, well, all we'll do that. We have some emotes that we've talked about. Um, we've talked about making. But yeah, so as much as I love the South Figaro section here, and it's, it's actually really interesting as far as um, South Figaro being a section, like a location in the game that has a lot of character. One thing that I think that Final Fantasy VI does very well is that a lot of the cities have personalities. They don't all. There are cities that like, okay, maybe you have feelings about Miranda, but you probably don't have big feelings about Miranda. But there are a number of places that have a strong, um, a strong sense of place. And so fans of Final Fantasy VI tend to have feelings about specific cities, which is cool. And I think that, um, I think that South Figaro is, I mean, for me personally, I like the scrappy rebellion, you can't tell me what to do, resourceful, self-sufficient, like quirky people. So South Figaro is right up my alley. It's also where Locke and Sully's meet. Um, but so the section with Locke is interesting because you kind of get a sense for what it means to be under Imperial rule, um, which is not necessarily something that like consciously I was aware of as a kid. I feel like this game did a lot of things and it did them well. And when I was a kid, I didn't necessarily fully appreciate it. It just kind of absorbed in. Um, but 
like your first introduction to the Empire really I mean obviously you see you know Terra's brainwashed etc cetera, etc cetera, but the fact that they set Figaro on fire their their supposed allies where as far as we know they as far as they know as far as they know according to what we know <laughs> we know that they know that we know um, uh, you have there's no reason for them to do that except that Kefka's crazy and you're like why is this crazy awful person in a position of power and authority um and then like you kind of get more of a sense for that but when you're in South Figaro like it feels stifling like running around there like and having to sneak around and only be able to go to certain places at certain times and stuff like you're just like wow these guys are everywhere they're doing everything like i'm cho like they're choking the life out of this town um and that's a really good way to like lead you to have and yes i'm going to sing the opera um but that's a good way to lead you to have um yeah, no, it's, it's really claustrophobic, and the thing is, you at that point have gotten to know South Figaro well enough that you kind of, you kind of like the place. Like, um, I personally find it one of the most appealing and likable cities to just walk around. Um, it doesn't hurt, but it's connected to Figaro in some ambiguous way, um, and you love Figaro. Um, so they, they, they set you up to like the city and feel what it's like running around and everything's linked to everything and it's such a free place and then suddenly it's not a free place and you really feel it. And yes, you get a sense of what it feels like to be in, in a, you know, in an occupied place um, in that kind of oppression. Like, that's, that's a really interesting decision. Um, something that I've been learning, okay, so it's gonna be mild spoilers sometimes with me talking about other games. So I've been playing Final Fantasy XIV. It's my first MMO. I've been playing it for two years and I'm still not in Heaven's Word, but I'm close. Um, but there are refugees um, due to war and an empire. Um, definitely there's elements of Final Fantasy VI in XIV that I see. Um, but one of the things that the game does um, fairly late in the 2.0 section that I'm playing that has when the story became interesting to me was it has you kind of running around talking to the refugees and you have a number of like little like fetch quest type things that are like go give soup to all of the refugees and what that does is it makes you the player go talk to these people and learn from talking to them what their situation is like and the more you do that the more you actually start caring about what's going on and prior to that it kind of felt like it was this uh thank you aquamagistus hopefully we'll see you around again um but prior to that section of 14 i'd kind of been like meh on the story um but that made me care because i was suddenly like facing the very real consequences for realistic, sympathetic people for what was going on in the world. Um, and I don't have a hard time sympathizing with characters in fiction. Obviously, I cry when sad things happen in video games because I can empathize with those characters. Um, but there is really something to be said for making the player get in there and walk around in these people's shoes and be like, oh, so having you go around South Figaro very quickly establishes how you feel about the Empire and what they're doing. Um, so it's great for that. Um, and the fact that so much happens because of the man who sold South Figaro out. And then you find Sully's in his basement, like in one of the one of the rooms there, storage rooms where she's being held. Um, it really gets a human corruption. And when he's like, I don't even know the I don't even need the money, why did I do this? That's never happened in real life. There's no commentary about human nature here. Certainly not. Games have never made political observations about human tendencies. Never. <laughs> so, that said, so the South Figaro section serves a good purpose, mostly world building, honestly. As much as I love Locke and Sellys, and as much as, much as the scene where he unlocks her and they escape is like super important to Locke and Sellys fan girls, let me tell you. Um, there's, like largely it has to do with getting you to have a feel for what the Empire is like. And you kind of do that same thing when you go to, uh, to, to Sabin's section. Now, as much as I love the South Figaro section where I was going with this, is Sabin's section is actually better. Of the three branching 
paths at this point in the game. Even as a diehard Lock and Sully's fangirl, I have to tell you, Sabin section is the best. It does world building, it establishes the setting, it establishes the bad guys, it establishes a bunch of good guys, it has tons of emotional value. Um, it's kind of funny. Like, it's, it's like a whole, like, complete quest. You get a full experience. Because the situation with Kefka and Doma is really interesting. It, it, it establishes, if you didn't already get the memo that Kefka was a crazy, awful jerk, which he is, setting Figaro on fire is kind of relatively okay. Because Figaro is able to defend itself, you know? Figaro is this strong, self-sufficient city, king kingdom, that, like, it's kind of like punching somebody who can punch you back, you know? Like, it's wrong that Kafka sets it on fire. <laughs> like, that's not ambiguous. That's wrong and bad, and he's bad. But it's not the same as poisoning an entire castle of people engaging in genocide rather than, um besieging a place um, is very much more more not okay and you see the consequences like Figaro's fine they're fine they just like dive into the sand and hang out there for a while until things are fine you know like it's cool we got this Doma's not fine and children die like that's on screen a child is dead because of that which is one of the absolute surest ways of establishing bad. Um, so Kafka is, un is is irredeemable, and at that point you're kind of like, is the Empire irredeemable because, you know, Leo. <clears throat> Leo seems to have a, have a, have a conscience. Leo seems to be human, like, they, they definitely established that. Um, but so you get that really interesting stuff. You get, um, Cyan, who I, I don't necessarily appreciate how, when he's the butt of jokes, I tend not to like that. Um, but he's a great, serious character, a grown-up with real complications in his life. I should probably fight the bad guys. Oops. I don't even know if I did that right. I did that wrong. What was I trying to do? Fire dance? I don't have fire dance yet. Lauren! I probably should have talked about that stuff while playing this game. But, you know... No! Shadow! Oh my god. Ah, boy! Do I load my save? Do I load my save? Yeah. Oh, hey. All right, we're gonna do that, cause that's that's silly. Yes, reset the game. <laughs> yes, Sophie, it is. Yeah, so that's randomized, folks. And usually, you want, usually he sticks around longer than that. Maybe it's because I just stood there for a while, and and Shadow is like, meh, maybe not. Grasshopper. These ones are rude. They talk with their mouths open. <laughs> Hi, Willow. Did I do it? Did I do it, Sabin? Well, we'll never know because he's berserked. Okay, well, I did it wrong, as it turns out. That's all right. Hi, humming your mono. I'm sorry, I'm going to say your name wrong. Hermano, hermano. Should, should I say umming hermano? I don't know. Okay, so see, Savin didn't leave us there. Hi? Oh, hey, Jamma! What's up? Yeah, I'm streaming at a, at a, a European friendly time. Also, hi, Cory. Look at that, I got it right. It's largely that I wasn't left, hitting left far enough, which you learned last time. <clears throat> but yeah, so Final Fantasy VI is in some ways a little bit juvenile in its storytelling. Um, it's not what I would describe as a subtle 
game per se, especially when it comes to the somewhat over the top melodrama of the characters' emotional stories. Um, but it's doing something. It does something and it does it well. Oh, we went up there. Is this a joke of a forest? No! Wait, where am I? Is, wait. Okay, I'm gonna fight one more dude. Um, yeah, don't, you better not leave, Shadow, or I'm gonna be so mad at you. I don't remember if there's Chocobo Forests in this game. I just, my brain, my brain went there because of Final Fantasy IV. Um, so the level of talking that I'm doing, yes, this is, this is my childhood emulator too. It's just a slightly different, uh, childhood <laughs> era. Um, no, I had Z-SNES back in the day. This is, I believe, how I tried playing Tales of Fantasia way back in the day. And a retranslation. Don't you dare. He didn't do it good. Um. Okay, we're back to Doma. Did I do it wrong? I bet I did. Sorry, I'm just like... One of the downsides of me talking so much is that I don't necessarily think about what I'm doing. Also, this is such a great... Oh, hey! We didn't play this before! Did we? This one, this is actually how we open our medley, um, which starts off with me. I count us off and I start playing, and then everyone else comes in there, which I'm not the rhythm person in the band. So good luck with that, everybody else in the returners. Have fun with Lauren catching up. No, we've been, we've had the band now since 2013, so I know how to count that off. Okay, so I did this wrong. Where am I supposed to go again? Don't expect me to have where I'm going memorized, and I apologize for that. But it's interesting though, like the camp went straight from there to here. Okay, well, or we could just be berserk. That's that's fine too. Go ahead, Sabin. It's, it's fine. You're good. We're, we're cool. It's cool. It's all cool. Everything's cool. Bam! The bad guy's dead. I still swear that the beaker looks like a like a like a hipster skexy. You know? Am I wrong? Yes, that's right, Willow. That is what I'm talking about. Okay. You weren't here the last time I talked about that, so. Wait, is the stray cat the one that makes me berserk? Does it like cat scratch me and I like lose my mind? Is that a thing in this game? Ah, oh. Yes. So this sort of thing is why I could never actually be like... People are like, oh, you should present a pan. Oh, Shadow!
I disapprove. <sighs> Come on, boy! Can't you just stick with me to the Phantom Train? You're funny to have on the Phantom Train. Why are you doing this? Why? That's a good question, Hot Brushings. Why, you little meanie? Why, Shadow? Why, Shadow? No! Ah, uh, he doesn't. He's like, no, I'm too bad. Well, fine. I tried getting SNES 9X to work, and it didn't work for me. I don't know what, what, what wasn't working, but something about it wasn't working, and I was like, you know what? I'm totally fine. Oh, I should probably heal Seven. Like, I'm just gonna go back to what I know. I don't know if Stolen Light is still here, but Stolen Light has tried to help me with no numerous technical issues over the years, because it turns out that despite having played video games for most of my life, I'm a... Okay, come on, Sabin. Get it right. I'm not the most technically minded person. It even occurred to me that you could use SNES 9X on your phone or ZSNES or anything. Okay, well, Shadow, I didn't need you anyway. I don't even know where I'm going. Hey, Frederick, what's up? Frederick is one of my music friends. He does outstanding arrangements of video game music, and I have played a flute or two for him over the years. Gah! Where am I going? What am I doing? I don't know! Let's go this way. You would think I would remember this. Hey, Brenneman! Yay, my friends are showing up, too. Yeah! I'm having another Final Fantasy VI party. Oh, Sabin, why? Why am I so bad at this? It's not Sabin's fault. It's Lauren's fault. This is without a doubt. Okay, here we go. Why couldn't why couldn't Shadow hold up for this? Okay, hold on. We're gonna oh my god, the music is so good in this game. I love it so much. Okay, well fine, I'm gonna give up on Shadow. Okay? Are we alright with this? Does anyone object? I don't think it makes a huge difference. Uh I have barely started a an arrangement of this song because I have never actually put a cover of this song up on my YouTube channel. Um, but then I realized I should probably finish some of the things that I've been working on since 2015. Because I have a number of tracks that I started in 2015 that aren't done. So that's my priority <laughs> is getting those done and then we'll do this. Anyway, we're going to give... Okay, fine. Yes. Shadow... I did that, Brennamania. I did that already. Well, it's too late now. Too late now, Shadow. God, this song is beautiful. This visual is beautiful. Listen to that flute. Oh, goodness. I'm super flat here.
Oh man, my bandmate has continued to arrange more of Dancing Mad, so now we have arrangements for three. And they're like, they, so clearly what happened here is people didn't realize that they could recover here, so they just took over control from you. And we're like, recovery spring, don't die. I'm like, okay. But just look at this, okay. So those of you who are here who didn't grow up in a pixel era, because I'm assuming some of you did not grow up in a pixel era. Some of you are younger than me. This is stunning. The level of detail in this forest, particularly this, this spring, pond, lake, whatever it is. Um, when people complain about the mobile version, of Final Fantasy VI, they're complaining about the changes to the graphics. So people who don't, who who didn't grow up with pixel art, are often not always, but often a little uncomfortable with pixel art because they're not used to it, and it's a different way of communicating ideas. Um, so to appeal more to people who are not used to pixels, um, a lot of times like remakes of games will either like go all out and be like well let's make this game properly 3d or something like that um or they'll do a thing that kind of glosses smooths over the pixels to make them look more like a painting um one of the difficulties with doing that is that in the case of pixel art basically every single pixer pixel pixel Every single pixel is hand placed. It is intentionally designed to be exactly there for an exact reason. Um, so you can manually choose to redraw it, or you can take the easy way out and use an algorithm to smooth out the lines and make it not pixelated, which is what the Final Fantasy VI mobile version does. Um, algorithms don't have the sense of artistry that an individual human being does. So, yes, you eliminate the pixelization with that kind of thing, but you lose a lot of the artistry of it. You just you just do. It's 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 more functional and more like workmanship as opposed to craftsmanship if that makes sense. Um And it's possible that I resist that kind of thing just because this game, as you can tell, is very important to me and I'm accustomed to it. And I think that it is beautiful the way it is. Um, but I think also I've seen different versions of pixelized art be made not pixelized and some of them work better and some of them make work... Some of them work more and some of them work less. The Final Fantasy VI one is in the works less category. If it gets you playing the game and you enjoy the game, then I can't really complain. But I'm gonna complain <laughs> about it. Um, but yes, yeah, so the level of detail here is... I mean, just like, look... Okay, I can do this blitzing. Like, look at the level of detail in the background here and the consistency of the colors, the way they've taken the colors from this overworld section and pulled those into their combat background. Wait, am I misremembering and they didn't do the, um, they didn't, they only did the sprites? So one advantage that Europeans have from the Super Nintendo Super Famicom era over the Americans is you guys got Terranigma. We didn't get Terranigma. Which, having played Terranigma, I understand why Nintendo of America said no. <laughs> Knowing what Nintendo of America restricted. Oh, wait, they, you mean they redrew the characters and made them look that bad? So I'm like, I assume they use an algorithm on the characters as well. Okay, don't expect me to know where I'm going here, because I don't. I'm going to get lost in these woods. Okay, so I 
we play this in our medley with the band, so you hear me singing along. Oh no, Frederick, so you miss out on the ending. She reminds me I need to reach out to my friend Will who came by last week. Let's see how he's doing. God, I love... I did it! No, I didn't do it wrong. Okay. That looks like a train. That is a train. What? I don't... Apparently, I missed literally everything else in the forest. Did I miss anything important? Should I start over? I'm so bad about never going where I'm supposed to go. And that's like my thing. But apparently, I went exactly where I was supposed to go. That's not what I meant to do. I swear there's a couple of paths that have like treasure chests and stuff. Uh. <clears throat> oh man, yeah, trying to trying to play things that you can't play because something's wrong because of the emulation or something. Good times. Or it's like trying to play a thing that you have to have. Should we should we go back? Should we go back? Should we load a save? I did accidentally into the plot. How did that happen? I have a really I don't know. Oh, well, whatever. Survivors inside. Mm. Yes. Nope. You don't get to go that way. We're doing it. Sorry. So I kind of feel like there are a number of sections in Final Fantasy VI that don't make any sense at all. If you were to be telling a cohesive, coherent story, why are we on a train? Why do we go to an opera house? What? Why? Who thought of this? It feels like they had an idea for a really cool and interesting set piece. And they were like, we really want to have a haunted train. A, a, a phantom train carrying the spirits away to, to, to the um, afterworld. Um, or like, we want to have an opera. We'll just go to an opera house and do an opera scene. So they come up with like the most contrived and silly way possible to fit that into the story. And I know this because when I was working on Project Esper, we were trying to figure out how on earth we were going to condense, you know, a 40 plus hour game down to a two and a half hour um, uh, adaptation and also make it consistent and coherent and have um, have like through lines that make sense and like emotional consistency. And it's like, now the opera scene is made to justify itself because they wanted to do it. I actually feel that like the Phantom Train makes more sense than the opera scene, but neither one of them does really. If you think about it, they're some of the most memorable sections of the game. They're a great idea to experience telling a story though. If I were to tell the story of Final Fantasy VI in a coherent like if I were if I were to adapt it neither one of those scenes would appear in the story because neither one of them actually makes sense they're all like like they are a departure from things that make sense into we wanted an excuse to do this other thing that we thought was really cool and then we get back on track which works just fine partly because since this is a game instead of a book the experience like like the entire like sensory experience of doing it Oh, yeah, well, see, like, having a train that carries people to an afterlife is not unprecedented. It's not that having a train carrying people to the afterlife doesn't make sense. It does make sense. Um, but the the way that it is, and then you fight the train, and, like, why are we on a train? 
why do we randomly wander into a forest and there's a train and then we fight the train and there's ghosts on it? Like, it's weird. It's a weird decision. And to put enough time and effort and music and graphics and all of that into this weird little thing. It's a, it's a, it's a strange, it's a kind of strange decision. Now, emotionally, they make it work because they give you good payoff, um, with, with, um, with science family. Um, just like the opera house gives you a good payoff if you're a Locke and Sully's fangirl, which I am. So it's great. Um, <laughs> but Final Fantasy VI was conceived, I think as many games are, as a series of scenarios. And so you'd have somebody off working on this scenario because that's like either their baby or like I think in this game in particular, different writers were assigned to different characters. So it'd be like, I'm I'm the person who wrote for this one and this one and this one. Um and this is a scenario I really want to have happen. So to a certain degree, it's kind of like there's a bunch of scenarios and they're stitched together into the rest of the plot. Um, and the grand set piece sections are, again, some of the most memorable parts of the game. I don't think you could have anything like that in an ordinary book or TV show or movie. Um, I don't I don't think you could because what makes it work is that the gameplay draws you in through it. The experience of playing it draws you in through it. So you don't stop and think, why is any of this happening? What does this have to do with anything? Why are we here? And they have provided like it's not that it's completely without context or completely without ties, but it is a pretty big, random, weird departure. It's like Ultros. What the heck is he even doing in the game? I don't know. We needed some comedy. Um, but, but one of the most sensible um, interpretations of the game that I have ever heard in my life, which we are going to talk at length about um, because it really was kind of a revolutionary thing for me hearing about it a year or two ago. Um, so who here has played Final Fantasy IX? I played Final Fantasy IX. I would grab my Zidane little figurine, but he's he fell into pieces. So I had to fix him. Um, but so Final Fantasy IX is about an acting troupe. And there are sections in the game that are literally them performing. But if you actually compare graphically the sections where, like, literally the characters are performing on stage with the way, like, combat is presented in the rest of the game, Final Fantasy IX is a play. It is presented like a play. The way that it's melodramatic is like a play. Um, the, the way that it's humor is folded into things like the love letter scenario is straight out of Shakespeare. Um, and Final Fantasy VI is an opera. Um, if you were to read the, I don't remember what the term, the libretto for an opera, and it like lists off like the characters at the beginning. It'll be like the character and it'll have like two sentences or so about that character. Very similar stylistically to the way that characters are introduced in Final Fantasy VI. There's also literally an opera scene in Final Fantasy VI. Everything is like, like turned up to 11, the melodrama, like an opera. Um, when we get to the scene of Celis on the cliff, it parallels directly, both like visually and musically, it parallels the actual opera. Um, and having spoken to a friend of mine who became a professional opera singer because she loves Final Fantasy VI and Celis is her favorite character. Um, she's like, no, there like literally are like famous arias that are like the I'm going to sing dramatically over the ocean and then fling myself into the sea. Um, so, yeah. Hi! We are talking about Final Fantasy VI. Um, because this is the kind of, this is the kind of stream where I'm just gonna just talk. More than usual. You think I talk a lot normally. Buckle up! <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think that Final Fantasy VI as an opera makes so much sense. And so when you think about it from that perspective, having these crazy set piece scenes that don't necessarily fit the story itself um, tonally, but are really cool and memorable, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so like, it's an excuse to be like, what kind of really cool special effects can we do on stage and cool scenes? Um, so if we think about this, 
And we're going to keep talking about this. We're going to keep returning to us. <clears throat> I didn't come up with this idea. Um, there is, in fact, an academic who presented on this at MAGFest. Um, and, like, my mind was blown. Because he was like, and here are the things, the points that I'm making. Here are the parallels. Here are the things. Also, Sully's on the cliff is the reprise of the opera scene. And I was like, Pew! it was so exciting. <clears throat> I don't know if we're going to have golfing metaphors in this. But there was something that we were talking about golfing in, but I don't remember what it was more recently. Was it Mythic Ocean or was it Zelda? I don't know, but golfing did come up at some point. Um, I think it might have been a recorded panel. I need to get more information and talk to the person who did that because it was so cool. It's also folded into some other stuff. So somebody had really smart things to say about the music of Mario Galaxy which I love. So I was really happy. It was a great panel. One of the highlights of MAGFest that year for me. Um, but yeah, so we are in an opera and that's why we wind up on a haunted train with ghosts and feelings and ghosts. And there's a lot of them and I'm probably going to die. I'm not really paying enough attention to do things right. I want fire dance. No, I don't want gravity magic. Put your gravity magic away. Put your gravity magic away. Oh, this should be super effective here. Actually, I don't want fire dance. Yeah. Holy magic on the undead. Big fan. Okay, I'm getting slightly better at Auravolt. Um, but you know, the train is really cool. Like again, when I say that the train, that the Phantom Train is not like consistent with the rest of the game and doesn't necessarily make sense with the rest of the game, um, this is not a complaint against it. It's actually one of my favorite sections of the game. And I think that's true for most people. I think that, like I said, I think that the sections that I've called out as being kind of inconsistent with the game are some of the most beloved part of the games. I'm glad they're in there. I'm glad we go on a train love the opera scene. I love this stuff. I love it. But it is a really weird decision as far as telling a cohesive, coherent story goes. Um, yes. Uh, Final Fantasy X. We're, we're, oh god, I have to remember how to do suplex. But yes, we're going to suplex the train. Don't you worry. We got this. Um, yeah, so partly due to people commenting on the Final Fantasy X stream is part of why I decided to do this. Because if people like me talking about Final Fantasy X as I experienced it for the first time, then I guess you guys are all stuck with me talking about Final Fantasy VI not for the first time. Look at this! Okay, so it's just that I'm really bad at D-pads. Thank you. A mantle? What do you mean by that, Tophie? So if I should call you something, I know we've gone over this before. Oh no! Sabin, I just said that I was good at it and then I was bad at it. I'm sorry, buddy. Those, it's, it's, the, it's the chugging guitars. Get me every time. Okay, fine. I don't remember what I'm supposed to do. Still going. Oh my god, that's such a great name. No! <sighs> he did. He left early. No! What are you doing? Stop! I'm gonna die on the Phantom Train. How appropriate. No! Stop! Ah! ah. Yes, even with my favorite game, the technical side of things is not my favorite. No! Oh, I didn't know that, that existed, Tofi, but that's a concept that makes perfect sense. I mean, they're both justified within the story. They both fill an important emotional role. The train is really, really cool. Um, it makes sense in that it gets us from one place to the other. Like, how are we going to get from place to place? Um, it has character stories. That, like, they tie it directly to science story, which is, at this point, one of the most um, sympathetic and compelling bits that we've encountered in the game so far.
I have played teensy bit of the original one. Wasn't for me. I know four really well. I've played about half of five. Wasn't really my thing. Six I know very well. My sister and I played through seven. I didn't like it very much. Um, but she talked me into playing Crisis Core a couple of years ago. And I loved Crisis Core. Um, eight I played the first, a little over the first disc and then it was not my thing. Um, nine. I love nine. Love nine. Ten. I love ten too. Um, or 10 also, I haven't played 10 too. Um, haven't played 11, haven't played 12, haven't played 13, and then I'm playing 14, um, slowly. Haven't played 15. Played Final Fantasy Mystic Quest on Final Fantasy Crisis Core. Um, there's more Final Fantasies. Yeah, it, like, it fits Stolen Light. It fits, it fits, if you think about it, in the context of an older Star Trek sort of, like, thing. Yes, we are going to play more Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> Carries the departed to the other side. Because, again, we're not allowed to say death. We're not al allowed to say dead. Um, and so writing in circles around that. Is, see, we all have to go sometime. Like, it's, it's, it's such an interesting problem to, to say... So, characters die, and their families die on screen, and then there's a train of the dead carrying them to the land of the dead. But you're not allowed to say the word dead or death. Like, okay, well, what do we do then? So. I feel like this is something that we should say to ourselves. Whenever we're feeling that way, you know, you know, there are times in your life that you have to remember <laughs> that you have things to do here. So we're going to stop for this, make for the engine and suplex that train. You're going to stay right here with us and things are going to get better. Even if we have to suplex the train with you, you know, there's something kind of empowering about that. friend what's in here again I don't remember oh yay hello why is the impresario here let's see what they say see look at all of these ways that we're not saying dead we're not saying death this is such a good song You can hear a little bit of flute there. That would actually be pretty easy on flute. And it's just like a little delicate part right here. It totally references the funeral march, doesn't it? You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, right? The You know, you know, yes, it totally does. That totally is that section right there. It's a it's a funeral. It's a it's you nah is so smart. How is he so smart? What a good music person at music -ing. I want music because music he is Umatsu. Anyway. <laughs> I do the words. I words, words, words well. Wordsing. Yeah, no, Lesser Dog was a heck of a fight. <coughs> the 
<laughs> Fumble. Science, like, don't go messing with the undead train. I reintroduced some comedy. Har har. Beatie's time schedules. Thanks for following. All right, well, I'm excited. That's it right there! It's so smart! Oh my god, that's so great! I'm sorry, I've been playing this game for I don't know how many years, and I just noticed that, and I'm so excited! Run! Run, 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 run! Run! Run, party, run! Okay, there we go. Much better. I don't want to die to the bomb. Okay, I guess I'm gonna fight you guys. I'm gonna go and like tell everyone I know. Oh, I should probably heal my party at some point. No, Simon! No! I'm gonna tell everybody. Listen to the amazing bass line in this song. It's incredible. Yes, no, this is less me challenging Sabin because it's not his fault. Howdy. Howdy, folks! It's totally from Doma, where everyone speaks in these and nows. I probably should practice suplex. No, that's true. Super Nintendo music actually had a lot of complexity to it. Um... Every time I hear it now, I'm gonna get excited about that. Why am I so excited? I don't know. You should listen to the music from Terra Enigma. It's ridiculous. It's amazing. Recovers the wounded. Hi, Markishin. Oh man, turning that is amazing. I think you'll like it, Willow. I think it has I think it has themes that will resonate with you. I think Terranigma is easily one of the best games. Um, on the, in the Super Nintendo era. Um, well, I'm not playing it very well. I accidentally actually went where I was supposed to go. Um, tragically. Yes, it is the third game in the, uh, Terra Earth series. Ba -da 
I actually never played any of them as a kid except for Illusion of Gaia. <clears throat> That's me being a symbol. Aren't you impressed with my symbolism? <sighs> Do I want to heal the ghost? I don't think I actually want to heal the ghost. Yes, Terranigma has one of the best ending sections, like the ending of it. There's some stuff where it kind of falls apart near the end. Like one of the chapters goes on way too long, but... Oh my god, Blue Glass, are we talking about Bloody Mary? We're talking about Bloody Mary. We're always talking about Bloody Mary. Literally everyone that I talk to about that game. That's, that's, that's the one. That's the boss fight. That is bad news for everyone. I'm getting a little bit better at this, at least. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I would say that. Terranigma is really outstanding. It's a really good game. Um, no, I'm sorry, Savin. Yeah, you have, you like use a different weapon for her, and if you're not, if you're like. If you are below the right level, you can't hit her, you can't do damage. If you're above the right level, like, you destroy her in no time, but... It's a super good game, and if you have any interest in, a uh, uh, action-adventure run around mashing buttons to hit bad guys... Well, I guess they've kind of got faces in their little hoodies. I never noticed that. And they've got like little like skulls on the tops of their heads. Guys, what? <laughs> yes, as a flute player, naturally, I liked Illusion of Gaia. This should come as no surprise, because you can use your flute telekinetically to move things. You can have two ghosts. I, I, I in fact, do have two ghosts. All right, can I aura bolt? Turning was one of the few games that motivated me to grind just because it was really fun to play. That's true. Uh, Shadow did abandon us. I did not mean to lose him. He just uh, left, much to my dismay. Gravity magic, oh, gravity magic rounds down. Interesting, I never noticed that. Why is it called gravity magic and then it does math? Why isn't it called math magic? You know? What is up with that? I can't be the only one wondering about that. Yeah, and Purple Face is hanging out with us. It's keeping me company.
Yep. I'm a real professional. I don't know what I'm a professional of, but I am. Eh? Uh? Oh, hey! What? No escape! Oh my god, my sister and I used to have jokes about the no escape section. I don't know why. It's one of the things that, like, we thought was funny when we were small children. Now that we're small children, I, or not small children, I don't remember what was funny about it, but... <clears throat> Whatever did you think you were doing? No escape. No escape. I probably should have healed. They're coming. Oh no. There's so many ghosts. What are we going to do? Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. Maybe you should heal your party members just to be sure. Have I missed the place where you go and eat? Oh, that'd be so sad. That's such a great moment. I bet I did. I bet I missed it. Oh, how am I missing everything? I don't usually miss everything when I play this game. That's a swear, isn't it? Look at all those ghosts. That's a whole lot of ghosts. So I'm just gonna pick everybody up. Yep. He picks up your party and carries them on his shoulder as he jumps way forward. Oh, oops. Wow. We're a little bit safe. Uh, oh! This is absolutely not going to have any sort of unintended existential consequences. Certainly not! around their necks. Is that what they've got around their necks? Are those clocks? What are those symbols? I don't know. What are their faces? Do they have giant, do they have little red noses in between giant eyes? Are, do they have like mouths on like the lower part of them? I don't know. I mean, I probably should know because Amano's illustrations of monsters are like pretty easy to come by, but. Wham! Sorry. Sorry! I can't not sing along with the music. It's so good. I think I'm funny. Alright, we're gonna do this. Save. Yes! Yes, guitar! All the guitar, all the time! So much guitar. Sorry, friends, now we're good. <clears throat> oh no! These guys are, uh, mummies? On fire? Possessed mummies? Mummies possessed by, uh, by fire spirit dragons? Liches? I don't know. I'm not quite sure. No, Sabin, I failed you again, my friend.
The fiery soul escaping from the illiterate and undead bodies. That's not wrong. I think we'll go with that. No, no. Um. Right. I was like, what am I doing here? Problem with 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 potential ADHD is what? What was I doing? Puts the drop on an enemy. X Y down up. Okay. When I ask, how do I suplex again? The answer is X Y down up. Because I'm gonna ask that. I'm counting on you guys to remind me. No. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I'm on fire. I don't want to be on fire. Why am I on fire? That's not good. I got distracted thinking about being on fire. I don't want to be on fire. That sounds like a nightmare for like anyone, but especially I have a problem with fire. Fire is ultra scary for Lawrence. I mean, to be fair, fire should be scary to everybody, right? I mean like, fire, right? Right? Probably could have used more tonics, but whatever. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. Okay, well, we're gonna go do that, so maybe we'll, like, level up a little bit. You know? Like, maybe we'll level up a little bit, and then we'll go eat some food. No! Not again! <laughs> Sovereign only gets to go, like, one in three turns. Yes, I feel like fire is a reasonable phobia. Perhaps me taking it to the degree of phobia is not so reasonable, but... I don't think I'm secretly adult, Rydia. I have way less magical powers than I know of. Also, my mom is still alive. Thank goodness. I like her. We did actually, we did actually have my mom and my stepdad both drop on stream when I was living at home in Texas. No! Come on, Sabin, I don't think. Oh, I did, I did, I did it, I did it. No, no, not on that one. Yes, on that one, we haven't hit that one at all. Yes, that's the spirit. Yes. I'm so excited about Fire Dance. Fire Dance is the best. Wait, my screen just went black, but we're good again. We're good. My monitor like turned off for some reason. It's turned off again. What are you doing, monitor? Dispatch. Send off the enemy. Toodaloo! Oh, that's interesting, Soul and Light. I didn't know that. Oops. Haha, <laughs> yes. Are you the shopkeep? Create our number the slower we can move. 
Are you a shopkeep? No? <sighs> okay, well. At this point, I'm not quite sure why I am leveling, but I am. So I am. Fire dance is a good reason. Let's go with that. Makes more sense than anything. It's because I... Because I'm going to go eat food is what it is. What level am I on? Yeah, I'm really not an optimizer, though. So... No, I'm not gonna get perfect stats. Plus, I'm gonna use Locke in my party, and like, I love the boy. He's not good, you know? He's just not. No, Zabin! No. Oh. Locke is my favorite character. I love him so much. He's also not good in combat, but it's okay. I think I'm better at fire dance than I am, though. Oh man, science gonna level soon. All right, here's a bit of humor, comedy. Comedy doesn't really have to make sense. Oh yeah, no, you don't have to min-max things. Like, like this, Savin's just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna eat the food of the day. Yeah, it's my best idea ever. All right, Savin. You're awfully lucky this is in Hades. Eat those pomegranate seeds, you're in trouble. <laughs> like, just like the sound effect, like the automatopoeia of eating. Um, it's interesting because um, Japan is, their Japanese is a more automatopoetic focused language. Um, so there's like a lot of like, sound effects and things and I assume that um, I assume that this is just a list of sound effects for eating in Japanese. Sabin would punch his way out of Hades so no, that's, that's probably fair. That'd be very sad for everybody. He'd have to pet Kerberos. It'd be fun. Puppy time. Puppies. Biscuits are good. Okay well which, which kind of biscuits are we talking about? Because I like both things that are called biscuits, but they're very different, and I want to know which one I'm about to to receive so I can prepare myself appropriately because they're very different. Yay! I've stuffed down all I can. I'm so full, he says. Look how full we are. Hi, ghosties. Please order at the table. They're so polite. Wait, he says. Do I look like a waiter? I love the dialogue in this game. That's definitely going to help this team. What else do I have equipped anyway? Yeah. So much magic damage. Excellent. Um. Really? I thought it wasn't magical. Oh. Well, never mind. I eat my words. 
Well, 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 well. I should probably equip party members. <laughs> What are you wearing, my friend? Nothing, huh? That sounds good. Hmm. Oh shoot, hold on, no! Oh my god. Is this what I think it is? This is what I think it is, isn't it? So this makes no sense at all unless you've played other Final Fantasies, which I hadn't. Like, I assume Ox is Sabin and Grandpa is Cyan. <laughs> and a manicurist? Like, just... Like... The Ox bellows. Like, you just tell, like... Ted Willsey was like, Mmm, yes, I did a good job with that. <sighs> Go, guys! Ha! 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 Give up? What even, sixth grade? Also, your name is spelled differently. What even? What are we even doing here, friends? What's going on? Why is this happening? What's even happening? What is this? Why did that happen? I don't know. I didn't press any buttons. Nothing happened. It's all a mystery. Yes, he was called Siegfried. They changed the spelling. What a windbag. Windbag and bag of wind. No. Windbag is actually a phrase. Okay, blue glass. I thought he was in one of the other Final Fantasies. Like five or something somewhere. Tell me if there's, um, no, run away, run away, no, run, 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 why is he not running? I mean, all our buttons broken, they might be. If there's anything, like, significant that I'm gonna miss, is there, is there a secret in this room? Is there, like, change under the couch or something like that? Oh, really? Okay. How are some characters better at running than others? Running shoes, then you run better. Is there a secret in this room? It's based on their age? That's amazing. Okay. Well, I guess that means that Realm and Gao are the best at running in the game. Mog. Okay, so that ghost is the babyest. Oh, really, Blue Glass? Okay. I don't remember this, apparently. Oh, there's another impresario conductor figure. I swear! I swear there's some sort of secret thing. 
Wanna stop the train? No big deal! Just use the controls! Alright, I'll get on it! I'll get right on that. Just stop the train. No consequences for anyone. Everything's fine. It's all fine. It's all fine. Everything's good. We're not gonna mess with anything. Yeah! Ooh! Was that... Was that a critical? Or was that the difference between using my earrings? Because if that was my earrings, holy crap. Conductor! Impresario! God, it's stolen light. I was really confused by that. Thank you. I mean, Impresario makes sense for the leader of the Opera House, kinda. Man. If the earrings, like, cause me to, like, double my Aura Bolt damage, I'm gonna feel silly for making fun of that. How did I attack somebody in the door? It's just the door. What the heck? I will one day not sing along with that. But today is not, excuse me. Today is not that day. There we go. Phoenix town. Okay. Oh no, my ghosty! Oh no! My ghosty is toasty! What am I supposed to do here? Well, I guess that was bad. Oh, my whole party's gonna die. Can't run away! No! Well, that happened. Ahem. <clears throat> <sighs> Recovers the wounded. Hi, Nano Panda. How is it? How are things? Uh. What does the hyper wrist do? Sniper sight. Phoenix down. Oh man. Well, I hope homework goes well. Black belt do. Do you join me? No, you don't. Uh. They gotta give me an opportunity to get dudes back. It's like I got a shortage of juice. Yeah. Okay. Wow. The earrings more than double. That. Okay. All right. I eat my words. They're tasty. I'm gonna put some chocolate sauce on them. Oh shoot! Alright, I'm gonna do my best. 
And by that I mean run away. No, I've got another pair of earrings, I thought. I think I put them on Sully's, though. Okay. Ding! Bling! Okay, so the, like, cheapskate in me wants to just use... Also, high blues! Uh. All right. We're gonna do it. It's not like we have any MPs. You ready? You ready? You ready to do this, folks? Oh, I don't wanna have to look it up. What's the thing here again? Left, right, middle. Thank you. Left, right, middle. Did I do it wrong? Then the one on the stack. Oh. The first. dangerous to have to like go out on the nose of the train engine to be able to turn it off. Oh, Locke's my favorite character. I do love Edge, but Locke is my favorite character. I like super serious melodramatic stories, so it's true. It is a pain. But it's interesting though that the train's not supposed to be able to stop, but it can. So you've been slowing my progress. Such a okay. My team is running away. Okay, hold on. All right, you guys ready for me to try this? That's X, Y, down, up. Did we do it? Did we do it? No, we did it wrong. I love how it just like starts like tossing things at you. It's just like, and then like, there's, it throws some pollution at you. Here we go, here we go, ah! I did it. Okay, I guess I should probably heal Cyan now. No! <laughs> yes, no, Sabin suplexing the train. In case any of you have never played this game before and are not familiar with the community um, of fans and the like pop cultural significance of things, Sabin suplexing a train. As we have just witnessed, because I successfully executed it, is, um, is infamous. Because, yes, a train is big. Sabin is big. He's not as big as a train, but he picked it up and he suplexed it. It's great. It's a thing. Um, so if you aren't familiar with Final Fantasy VI and you haven't heard of the suplexing the train thing, it's a thing. <laughs> Go look it up. You'll see a lot of... Yeah. Yeah, no, you can totally suplex that train. I mean, I guess it's got a corporeal form. <laughs> Does that count as speedrunning? Because I, I suplexed the train? 
Oh, Cyan, are you the train? I love this version of the Victory theme so much. All right, so like, we're like, ha ha, we've had a wacky, oh my God, really, I didn't know that. Okay, well, I'm glad to know that I'm now um, an honorary speedrunner because I see the like, some train on Steam stream. Ah. So we're gonna have a little bit of a tonal shift. It's like some comedy relief after the drama of Doma, which is kind of, they do a lot of interspersing comedy and tragedy, specifically in this section of the game. Cause you're like, haha, I got it. I saved the day. See, like, who boy? There's just something really strange about the, 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 some of the translation decisions. <laughs> Thanks, Chama. Yeah, and so we're like, yeah, we got this. I'm seven, bro, we've got this. Oh. These are people getting on the train. I think I recognize some of them. I just like the way he just, as funny as it is to have him knock uh, Savin aside, that also says a lot about like his desperation to get to them. You know? And like, this is such a beautiful moment. And it's just this like really small, touching little moment that um, I feel like the, the destruction of Doma deserves that. And it, it comes and goes really quickly. Um, but you know, I'm a little teary eyed and I've seen this game so many times and played this game so many times, but just to have that little moment of loss for um for cyan is beautiful and then the silence there is the right like that's that's appropriate um as as goofy as the phantom train is um the fact that they kind of like force you to have a quieter moment and then they um let cyan have his goodbye and then they, they, they make you sit there and have a moment of silence to feel it. And then we come out here and the overworld theme doesn't contradict that emotionally. The overworld theme is, um, is, it's a, it's a, this is not a victorious overworld theme. Cause this isn't a very victorious game. It is a game with a lot of pain and sadness in it. Um, and that's part of what I love about it. <sighs> and when you think about it, like, it's a really... Like, this game is a really powerful experience, especially as a kid playing through it the first time. Um, to have so much happening. Yes. Somber, wistful... There's a lot of terms you could use to describe it. Um, so here's um here's a little a little like thing about human nature and stories. Um, what's the saying? Um, like, what is it? Was it like you know, a death is a tragedy, a million a million deaths is a statistic. Um, and that is really how people work. Um. And like even when like you're like telling a story to somebody or even if you're like doing marketing or whatever and like people are like, oh I want to reach everybody, I want to talk about everybody, I want to make something universal. 
But if you want to make something effective, the best way to do it is actually to narrow your focus and tell one person's story. Try to reach one person in your audience, like something like that. Um, so we can say the entire kingdom of Doma was wiped out. Um, or we can show this person we've kind of gotten to know over a little while lose his wife and child. Which of those has more of an impact? Is it seeing all of the people of Doma file out? Or is it seeing the one person's heart break? Um, this game understands that. Um, and it, but it, make, and it does, it makes the full loss of Doma, like it makes everyone else's death feel more to you because you have that personal hold, like that thing to hold on to. Um, but yeah, no, the, this game definitely, definitely you fail and fail and fail and fail again. Oh, that's cool. Jazz Terrace theme. Yeah, I haven't gotten very far in 14. Like I said, I'm not yet at Heaven's Word, despite having played the game for two years. So, uh... Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing with Cyan. Wait, no, 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 that's him counterattacking. Oh, he counterattacks a lot. better at this. I clearly do. I'm, like, only using, like, half my turns. Yay, Cyan! that I tell exactly what to do and then they do it, uh-huh. Yeah, there's a lot of really good art. There's like t-shirts with the suplex on them. Like there's like the like fake comic book art of the suplex. Like the train suplex is a thing. Like, I hope somebody clipped that, but even if they didn't, I'll go back and try to clip it myself. I want to make a clips compilation video. Um, so I may go through um, all of the clips I've gotten for the past year, year and a half. It's been a while. Um, and make some clips videos for YouTube. So if there's anything that you're like, man, that should have been clipped so that we could have like a little collection of things, like, do that. You can't go on there. It's just there to look cool. Baron Falls, not to be confused with Baron or Baron. These are such good answers. It's not yes, no. Why not? You crazy? They're very, they're very, this is Savin scenario answers. Yeah. Oh, do I have to fight guys on my way down? I think I do, don't I? Do I have to fight guys on my way down? I think I do. Did I save? Probably not. Okay, well, we're gonna do that. We're gonna save first. Oh my gosh. Ah. Hold on, we gotta save. Get to the 
belt we're going to have to shut down. But um, we're going to do this. It's very impressive. It's a very cool visual when you're a kid. You're like, what? Oh my god, it's the forbidden fish! If you missed that, you haven't been watching me play Twilight Princess. I want fire dance, and I don't have it, but I'm gonna get it eventually. Sabin. Honestly, I feel like the characterization in this game is consistently better than the characterization in 4. And I love the Figaro brothers. Um, nothing against Yang. He's just not as much of a person. Do it right. Yes! I got it! Yeah! That's true, kicking is, is, is a feature of Yang. Which is handy. Rizopas. Also known as Color Palette Piranha. Bite, 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 bite. Oops, no! Ah! Did he just use El Nino on me? Heal yourself, then bring Sabin back. Well, that's a 90s reference if I've ever seen one. Alright, sorry guys. Uh, item Phoenix down on you, friend. I'm afraid I won't be able to catch up on chat until I finish with this. This is a bit tricky. We may have to do this fight over. Hopefully not. No! Don't kill me! Potion on yourself. Item potion on yourself. Alright. Alright. Blitz. The blitz... Maybe I'll just punch you with my fists then. I bet I can't. I bet I can't suplex you either. Okay, he's gone. Desperation moves. What desperation move? This isn't the Serpent Trench, so we don't get the really cool music.
such a beautiful song. It's so beautiful. I've played it before, but it's been years. this with my friend the world is square so if you go looking on my youtube channel you'll find old videos of me kind of sight reading this jamming back in it when uh hallway jamming at magfest was like not a thing that everyone did but it was a thing that me and my friends did and this is one of the songs that we did because they they play this with their bands um 
And if you ever see me with them at an event, it's possible we're gonna play Time Scar together at any given event. So, ha, huh, yeah, okay. So I should shut down because I have to go meet my cousins for dinner in like an hour and a half and it's gonna take me like 50 minutes to get there because transit and the subway and I have work to do too. So I think we're gonna stop for the day here. This feels like a pretty good stopping place, doesn't it? You know, like we made it to the vault. Sure, we took two hours and finished like a third of Sabin's section, but you know, eh. <laughs> Um, so I don't know if we're gonna do this every week at the same time. We might. Maybe. <laughs> I'm still kind of feeling my way through this. But it's fun. Like, it doesn't matter if it's a good, good stream. What's a good stream? Gowren thinks that a good stream is when we all have fun. Um, I don't know about tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna play um, tomorrow. I haven't decided yet. Are we gonna play Wander Song? Are we gonna play Celeste? Or are we gonna play Kentucky Route Zero? Maybe I'll do a poll. I'll post about it on our Discord, which we have. And on the social, the socials. I almost typed socials plural, which does us no good. Um, yeah, so we'll figure out what we're playing tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> what, me have planned things in advance? Don't be ridiculous. All right, but yeah, we might do this next week um, and just see how it goes. And if it turns out that my laptop can stream both the emulator and the OBS at the same time can handle those, then when I travel, we might just replace everything with just all Final Fantasy VI all the time. <laughs> all right. Bye, folks. I'll see you tomorrow for Mystery Unknown Game number three. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. And if you have any questions about Final Fantasy VI or things you want me to talk about next time, let me know. And I, I'm sure I have thoughts. <laughs> Bye. Bye from Gowron! <laughs>